gathered, we were nourished, and now we are sent. Sent into this world so loved by God, redeemed and saved by Jesus Christ. Sent to be Christ's presence in the world. As St. Teresa of Avila said, Christ has no body now on earth but yours, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which to look out Christ's compassion to the world. Yours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he is to bless people now. This is our mission, and we are sent forth from the Eucharist, from the Eucharistic table, to continue the mission of Christ's love in this world. The final part of the Mass is really the concluding, the dismissal rite, and it's not just we're done here, let's roll the credits, so much as it's what the final movement of the Mass is. If the liturgy really is for us the source and the summit of the Christian life, then the dismissal, the movement from the liturgy to the way in which we re-enter the world is not just about going home, but about going forth with a purpose and a mission. Literally, the word mass is a play on words in the Latin that, that really is about the, the dismissal or the mission or the missioning, the, uh, this being sent on mission. And that's what the, the concluding part of the Mass is. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord that says we don't just go home, but we have a purpose, we have a mission, we have a job to do as those who proclaim the gospel, those who preach the gospel. Everyone who is a member of the church share in that mission, that call to evangelize. Or we'll hear the words, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life, which says that worship doesn't end when Mass ends. It says that we continue to worship and glorify God, not just in prayer, not just in devotion, but in the way we actually live our lives. Both of these, I think, are important reminders of what the Mass is supposed to be. The disciples, when they encountered Christ on the road to Emmaus, were transformed. Something wonderful happened. Luke, the Gospel writer, tells us that uh, those two disciples said, were not our hearts burning within us as the Lord spoke to us on the way and opened the Scriptures? And as they recognized Him, something was transformed. Their eyes were opened, and they went back. They didn't continue what they had been doing before, where they had been leaving Jerusalem downcast and sad, you know, hoping to pick up the pieces of their lives. But the Lord's presence and their experience with the risen Lord transformed them and renewed them to go back to Jerusalem to face the challenges that they would face, knowing that they now had a mission because the Lord had been risen. When we encounter the Lord in the Eucharist, we're not unlike those disciples on the road to Emmaus, where our lives are transformed by that encounter. Our hearts burn within us, and we find renewed strength and renewed zeal. And so our sharing in the Eucharist isn't just this private encounter with the Lord, but it's meant to invigorate us and send us back differently, to send us back strengthened, renewed, invigorated to face the challenges of living the Christian life day in and day out in the workplace, in our communities, in our neighborhoods, in our schools, with our families and friends, really to be witnesses, to announce the gospel of the Lord and to glorify the Lord by the way we live our lives. And that really gets to the heart of what it is we do when Mass concludes. And so it is that it's important really to stay for that last moment. I know it's easy to slip out after communion as though to kind of beat the rush to the parking lot or be on our way and, and, and not have to face the, the backlog there at the driveway or getting out the door. But the final words of the Mass, go and announce the gospel of the Lord, Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Really get to the heart of what the whole Mass is, a, is about for us. I encourage people to stay to the bitter end. Stay for all of that and hear that. Be energized. Be sent forth. Be reinvigorated to be reminded that what we do at Mass then has the power to transform what's happening in our lives. Whatever struggles, whatever challenges, whatever obstacles, whatever grief, sadness, fear, sorrow, whatever's there, can be transformed by what we do. And it's that those last words of the Mass that, that tell us that that's the way it's got to be, that the Lord's presence has an impact and it makes a difference for us.
The Eucharist is the beautiful gift that fulfills the promise of Christ to be with us always and consistently reminds us of our baptismal vocation and mission. The Mass deserves our full, conscious and active participation. How will you take what you have seen and heard in this presentation to deepen your love and understanding of so great a gift? Thank you for joining us.